So here I want to explain a simple workflow of uh, do basic animation with it. Uh, switch my shortcuts. Uh, okay. So when you start doing an uh, an animation, uh, usually before to draw the the clean frames, you start doing some sketch of the keyframes. So let's say you have drawn on paper or on uh, any raster graphics painting software uh, some keyframes and uh, I some here a few keyframes. Uh, okay. For example, simple K poses. And now I want these to be imported in time accurate uh, time la uh, time track. So to do this, you create a list file. And if you want more de uh, the details, uh, it's explained on the wiki. So basically, there's a header, the frame by second, and the file format, and then all the name of the files with a number before that is the frame that we, it will appear uh, based on the frame per, per second. So once you have done this file, uh, open a new project in Synfig and you can uh, import the list. Uh, keyframes, open here. Okay, so you can uh, modify the uh, in the the list file. Uh, if you want to modify it, best way is to create a scale layer uh, oh sorry I should have put interface in English too bad. Uh, uh, transform scale okay and then you select both and group it together so the scale will change the size of layer behind it um, let's say less 0.8 okay uh, a bit more so point twelve. Uh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh. Yes, minus one will work. One point twelve. It's enough, and then with the green duck you can move it where you want. So basically now you can play, and it's a time accurate in place. So you can start uh, then tracing the, the first key frame. Um, so basically, um, uh, to trace a key frame is not complicated when you use to be line uh, um, Bezier tool. Uh, you, the most important thing is to check in the uh, tool settings what kind of shape you want to create. If you, there's a whole, um, whole B line uh, that is will really now meant to be replaced with the advanced B line. The, the main difference is that uh, before the Control, uh, for the ducks, ducks is how they call the nodes uh, in Synfig. So the ducks to c control the weight of the strokes in old B line was tied to the ducks of the past itself, and now it's separate, so you can change the weights independently from where or place the path. Let me show you an example. Like like in the power stroke the demo in the Inkscape. Uh, then you create a, a area, beeline, and it's 
important to create both at the same time and not create only the outline and then try to fill it because when you create them at the same time, they are automatically linked. So it's more uh, efficient to uh, transform a shape and you transform both the outline and the shape itself at the same time. Um, it's good to have them in separate layers uh, compared to have it in one object because then you can uh, more easily organize which shape must be in front of the other in the animation. Mm. So let's open uh, not this one. Uh, see, I've started to trace uh, the face. Yeah. Uh, here is an example of uh, advanced behind where the control point change the white. Uh, you can select which ducks you want to display so it's more easy to see what you're doing. Uh, okay. No. Okay. No. Uh, sorry. Uh, then, uh, if you want to, while you trace, uh, it, as you create the inside shape at the same time, it, it's important to, uh, it's good to create tra semi-transparent uh, inside, so you still see your sketch under while you're drawing, and then only later will you'll fill it with the right colors. Um, and uh, there are great tools like mirror tool, so you can, for example, create only uh, one ear and then duplicate it, select all the ducks, and uh, with the mirror tool, it will tran uh, transform uh, it uh, uh, the opposite side. Uh, like, I'll show you quickly. Um, head. Uh, here, here, select everything inside. Uh, it's not easy with small screen. Okay, should be good. Okay, I have it. Select all the origin and tangent ducks and you mirror to uh, no, it's this one. And you select horizontal or vertical. Here yeah, I want horizontal and yep. You have the mirrored path. So it's very efficient workflow. Um So, uh, when you have complex uh, drawing, there's often uh, some parts that overlapping at the same time over and under another part, like in 3D. And so, to fake this effect, the best is to create a, a part uh, above, another part under, and link them together so it looks like one object, but it actually it's two objects. I'll show you this here. Uh, here, the, the shirt is one path and another path. And with the outline control, the control of the uh, outline width, you can hide the borders of the shape where it's needed. You see. Uh, Here, for instance, uh, um, um, so when you're done tracing, now, uh, 
Okay, to apply the colors, uh, oh no, it will be better on the other. Uh, you select the fill tool. Fill tool actually doesn't create shapes, it only modifies the color of the object you click on it. So, uh, select the color you want, uh, for example, um, and then, uh, oop, 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 you feel. Uh, and uh, to, that's uh, another specificity in SimSfig. Every, all the internal color system is a kind of custom linear light uh, calculation that's different from other software. So until recently, uh, you couldn't easily import a palette from GIMP, for example. So my workaround was to just import the uh, a picture with the a model or reference of the colors and then pick colors from it. But now there are the, um, hopefully they have programmed a way to import and convert the GIMP palette. So it, if you used to use the classical palette, you can use the palette from GIMP and have the correct colors uh, this way. So. One moment. Oh. What's happening? Crashed. Okay. Oh no, that's good. Okay. E. So now I have the See, I imported my reference color and just pick color from it. Um, so now I'm going to show you a specific feature uh, in Krita that's the uh, noisy gradient. Um, so select um, a shape here, yeah, for example, and uh, I'll add a, a gradient layer. Uh, with my well, colors are here from this to this color, for example. Okay, gradient two. Um, I'll use linear gradient or maybe radial gradient better here. Okay, and then on top of the gradient, I use a noise distortion. Oops. I create new layer uh, distortion and noisy distortion and encapsulate uh, group both so it distort only in the only the gradient uh, here and then on this group uh, select a blending mode that's onto or overlay or depending on the effect you want. And you can see the the pattern or the effect on the okay, it's not very and it, you can modify the noise gradient or the noise distortion to adapt the effect you want. So you can have non-linear effects this way. Um, uh, okay, that's now. Let's say the you have a, the the character is ready to animate. Oh. Next step. And then to animate what's the main point of Synfig, uh, there's globally two ways to record the um, movement. One, one way is to create a keyframe that will record every parameters at this point, like here the keyframes, new here. And another way is to create a 
in-betweens from your, uh, let's, let's say, here the harm. I've, um, oh no, not this one. I want to move, let's say, the arm here. Yes. Then add a rotate layer. Rotate. Put the origin of rotation at the um, uh, angle of where it should rotate. Uh, and then you, you can move. Oh, everything that's inside the group. Oh, it's not very well placed. Yeah, yeah. And then if you want to record uh, key uh, values at different time, but just for this point and not for everything, switch to animate mode, this little icon. And then I can go, let's say, uh, here and modify. And it records the difference. Go back to first frame. Zero, zero. Okay. So now, disactivate animate mode. And you see the movement is interpolated. Uh, that's the basic for cutout style animation. But at the same time, you can deform the shapes by moving its. its points uh, the same way I move the rotate layer. So with combination of all this, you can create very complex animations. Um, basically, here is what I did with this file. Uh, I'm going to show you the result, which is here. No, here. Final render. Yep. Video. Here it is. And then you can reuse. The, it, it takes a long time to create the character, but then you can reuse it and do quick animation in almost no time. And so that's very good uh, software for this. And it's good for big scale project. So that's, that's it. If someone has more questions, go on. Yes? Yes. Um, it's, uh, I'll show you in the uh, preference yeah, here. You see, uh, you can adjust the gamma here independently for every color. And the, um, how is it? Where is it? Here. There's a linear correction. Uh, color. It actually, it converts uh, classic RGB to linear RGB, but internally is. I don't have the details about how it's implemented. Just that you have to take care of it. That uh, if you uncheck it, the render will be different from the canvas. Um, that's it. You can adapt if you want. That's the, I've asked to the main uh, developer uh, if it was possible to revert to classic RGB so it's less annoying, but it's hard coded everywhere in the code because it's meant f uh, to work like this because to have better result of color mixing. Yes. Uh, that's because w when you import the x value of the color, uh, it's interpreted in a linear light color space. Yes. Yes. But th this is an issue in the. Uh, it's, it's been decided by the the original creator of the software, which is no more working on it, and as it's hard coded everywhere. People working on it have tried to revert this, but not yet. So, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. But 
now 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 it works that's what i said with latest version you can import it's a uh, added in master uh, version you can import now gimp uh, but with the previous version you couldn't do it straightforward that's it okay there's there were uh, a project uh, starting of hvg export but uh, no SVG import, but there's no SVG, ex SVG ex export yet because uh, uh, internally it works very differently and there's f some kind of effects I didn't show here that would not be translatable straightforward in SVG. You would have to rasterize and find some workaround. And that's why it's not done yet. Uh, it's a hard task. But uh, there's in the other way and uh, in Xscape, now there is a Synfig exporter, so you can draw your frames on Inkscape and export them to and load them in Synfig and then animate. And that's good. But I I see the point. It would be great to to export in SVG and animations for HTML. And yes. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so true. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, you now uh, the only render export you have is uh, raster export. But anyway, if you see, for example, Flash, when it exports, it uh, almost always exports as a, a rendered file a bitmap. It doesn't export a vector that's directly animated in the browser. So it's the same in the end. Uh, it would be a new new feature to have vector animation directly in the, like, uh, HTML5. It would be cool, but not yet. <laughs> That's it. Mm. Other questions? Yes, Raman? Not yet. Uh, there's a, a project on bone system to do such automatic uh, connection of the movements, but uh, for now you have to move each bone separately, each uh, rotate layer as a bone, this way. But it's, it, for a real animator, it's more flexible because you can more control the result as the, that kind of animation is not meant to be uh, photorealistic or uh, uh, physics realistic, so you can have cartoony deformations and Bo automatic bone system doesn't do such things for by concept uh, so it's better to can tweak it manually each bone in my point of view it's not so necessary to have this bone feature Great answer yes other questions no so I think the we're good. Thank you for listening and um.